By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing against an Urnum on Ice deck. And that player, Yoop, is playing on the left. And I think he's taking a mulligan right now, so he's showing his hand. Looking, looking good, but I guess no lands. And I am on the right, and I'm playing with a uh, pink Sylvan deck. So that's white and red, and I've splashed in some green, and that is actually the Sylvan Libraries. I'm playing with two of them, and I'm playing uh, with Regrowth. So that's why I've called it Pink Sylvan. And uh, let's see what's going to happen here. And we're playing according to the London Mulligan rule. You can see that here. So that means that you, when you take a Mulligan, you draw seven and you pick one and put that on the bottom of your library. So I get to start you with a City of Brass into a Savannah Alliance. So that's a great start for me here. So I'll be able to play nice and aggressively, and that's basically what I want to do. Adding a mountain here, and there is a Chaos Orb. So hopefully, I have a disenchant here. Taking a life, exactly. There's a disenchant on the Chaos Orb. So, so far, so good. And he's attacking me here for two with the Mishra's Factory, and I'm attacking back for two. And I'm playing the Pearl, and that allows me to play that White Knight. That's always kind of tricky. I like the White Knight as a creature, but when you play with multiple colors, getting to white can be a problem. Luckily for me, I found the Mox Pearl. Now I'm able to hit for four. So he's taking the damage, choosing not to block with the uh, Mishra's Factory, probably because he's light on mana, and that would mean that he loses a land if if I play like a Swords or a Lightning Bolt. Because when you're playing... Oh, and there it is. There's the Sylvan Library. So that's why it's called Pink Sylvan. And what I wanted to say is when you're playing uh, White... And red, that's one of the things I like about playing white and red. You have access to Lightning Bolt and Sword Supplies here. So you've actually got a lot of removal. And Lightning Bolt is ideal against Mishra's Factories. Playing a Savannah here and attacking. So my opponent is now on just two life and playing a Fireball here. And that's end game. So really, really quick game here. So let's go to our sideboards and then get into game number two. Game number two is about to start with my opponent on play. And I was very lucky with that game one. He simply wasn't finding any land. And this is a much better opening for him here with the Library of Alexandria. So hopefully I can find some land destruction. Taking a damage here and I'm playing a Sylvan Library. Passing turn. And of course, he's activating his library to draw an extra card, and he's got a Lunar Elves now. And that means, because they know he's playing with Ice Storms, that he can start playing Ice Storms next turn. And what can I do with this mana? Using all three here to tap it, going to 18, and that's great. A Stone Rain here on the library of Alexandria, so I was hoping for that. Passing turn. And that's one of the reasons why in old school... You know, I think a card like Stone Rain is underplayed because when you face a library, you have to remove it. And also a lot of decks are playing with multiple colors. So an Ice Storm or a Stone Rain, uh, they can just take away your key lands. And look at what, what my opponent is doing here. Destroying my City of Brass. So now I don't have any red mana or green mana. So a lot of spells are now denied. Obviously, I have the Sylvan. Taking an extra card here to find that red mana. Playing... As Savannah Lines passing turn. And yes, I'm on 14 now, but I also know that my opponent plays with four swords to plows here, so I'm kind of expecting to get some life gain back from those swords. And he's playing another Lanawar Elf. And also Tundra there, so now he has access to his blue power. So hopefully he cannot find it, because that can really be a game changer. Having to deal with an Ancestral Recall, just getting three cards is just insane. And with that Sylvan Trigger, I can just look at the top three cards and select the one that I want to pick. Taking a damage here, playing four. Oh, I kind of expected a Suchi here. Instead, I'm playing a Fireball. And I guess it's a double Fireball, taking care of both Lanawar Elves here. So that's a nice two for one. And I think... 
Well, I just wanted to say I could have also attacked maybe first with the Savannah, but then again, he would jump block it on the Llanowar. And he's attacking me now because I'm tapped out. So he's attacking me with the uh, factory. He knows that it's safe to attack. That means three damage for me. I'm already on 10. And swinging in here with the Savannah lines, taking an extra damage here, going to nine. And there is a Sarah Angel. So I'm playing with two Sarahs in here. This is exactly the scenario that I talked about before that Sword Supply series is going to give me life. In this case, it's not really going to help because he's probably going to swing in. Yes, that's what he does. So I'm losing that four life again. So I'm still on nine. And that's a little bit problematic. Attacking him here with the lions. Tapping for two. I'm playing a white knight here. So at least the white knight can ensure that my opponent is not going to attack with both his factories. Also, I have land open still. And he's using a strip mine to take away my city of brass and then playing. Ooh, but I've got, luckily for me, I have a sword supply series of my own because he was playing that Sarah Angel and that would have been a huge problem for me. But I'm still in this. I wonder if this is the right thing to do. And I kind of changed my mind as well. Not a very strong play. Or you attack or you don't attack. I kind of, this 50-50 this, this thing, I don't really like it. Then again, having a 2-2 two, two for a strike or two block does mean that he's probably not going to attack with both of them. I also have white mana untapped, so I can still play a disenchant. I can activate my orb. And there is a Sarah Angel. So that looks like a perfect target here for the orbs. I'm just going to put this in slow-mo. Let's see how this goes. And bam, that was some nice rotation going on there with the Chaos Orb. So that's a full hit on the Sarah Angel. And that's not unimportant. So I just have to keep using that Sylvan to find the right spells to keep the pressure on my opponent. And, you know, I'm still just on 9, so I can't really afford to draw any extra cards anymore with the Sylvan. And again, I choose not to attack with the Knight. And this is interesting, playing another problem for me, and the problems just keep on coming. And that's probably why Urnum on Ice is such a strong deck. It's just full of problems. And I'm want to declare my attack and in response he taps my white knight playing another savannah line and this is interesting choosing not to attack with the other line maybe then want to do a double block on both lines or of course he has his ic again so he can tap one of my lines so that's probably the idea behind it and another sarah angel so this is his third sarah angel that's just crazy i mean can i call that bad luck I mean, I, I know that's what the losing team always says, but I mean, come on, it's, it's third angel. What can I find here? A Suchi. Unfortunately, it doesn't fly. I need swords here. I haven't played a single swords to plow series here. Well, I've played one actually, so that's not true, but I still have three in the deck. So hopefully I can find one. He's attacking me. Apparently I don't have one. I'm on five life. So this is problematic. Playing an Ice Storm on my mountain, knowing that I play with Fireballs. And drawing a card. What can I do here? And let's see, he's tapping my Suchi. I'm playing a Factory in Passing Turn. So I have a lot of creatures going on, but because I'm on five, I cannot attack and put the pressure on. So now I'm on one life, and there's a disenchant on my Sylvan. Ay, 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 and that's painful. Because if I would have had the solution in those top three cards, I would have taken it by now. Playing a disenchant here on the Icy. Drawing a card, and I guess you just have to go full on, and that's exactly what I'm doing. I don't think it's enough though, because he's still on 15. So he goes to 14, activate his two Mishra's factories. And how will he block? I believe I still have, oh, I have one card in hand, he's asking me <laughs> how many cards. Well, only one card in hand. Um, he basically is killing a lot of my creatures. He's going on eight, so nothing wrong here. And it's his turn. And this must mean game. 
and it is i had a city of brass in hand so that's game so it's a one one so curious to see what's going to happen in that third and decisive game game number three game number three is about to begin and at least i get to start and look at my start here that's pretty nice it's a vanna and a mox pearl into a white knight turn one that's pretty cool playing a tropical island here playing a mox sapphire <laughs> playing a time walk so here i am feeling really you know uh, happy about my turn one and look at this i mean he's just ruining it for me uh playing a factory here it's just brutal you know blue power so difficult to play against uh there's an urnum playing a plateau here but uh i mean it's just difficult you know i mean you're starting off you're feeling confident and then this happens and another urnum gin Wow, and what can save me now? I mean, I've got two Urnum Jins against me and we're in turn four. At least having a Chaos Orb here that I am going to flip. Flipping on one of the Urnum Jins and using my White Knight as a target. Here we go. Yes, and that's another full hit. So at least the flipping is going, is going well this match. That's something. Attacking with the Knight because I have no intention of charm blocking. So that means I'll probably have to take the damage. Passing turn here. Remember, he still has one Urnum left. And what you basically want really is a city in a bottle, but I don't believe I play one in the sideboard. Maybe this is a sign that I should. There is a divine offering here taking care of my Mox. And oh, this is nice, a time twister. That's pretty cool. I always like it. I mean, obviously it's, it's not good. Because I'm dying, but I like it. From from all the blue power cards, I like Time Twister the most. Because at least I get to do something as well. Although I've seen decks where Time Twister gets really abused. And you can do really broken sick stuff with it. Anyway, he's playing another Lana where else passing turn. And I'm playing another Mistress Factory here. It's not looking great. And I'm passing turn. And I've actually decided to adjust my uh, Pink Sylvan deck a little bit since these games. I got some, some nice advising comments actually from you guys, from the viewers. And uh, one of the things I'm going to do is take out the Suchi and replace it with an Urnum Jin. And that also means that I'll be putting uh, Taigas in my deck so that I have enough green mana. So there's an Ice Storm here taking care of one of the factories and in response I'm um, animating my factory into a factory worker and pumping it with the factory that is taken care of. So I have now a 3-3 factory worker on the board and of course is there a disenchant? No, okay, so I guess I'm lucky. He's playing a Sylvan here and I'm curious. So I play another Mistress Factory. So I have tons of Mistress Factories this game, uh, this game, so I can't complain. I've got two White Knights, and usually when you can block with two White Knights and having four first strike power, it's huge. I mean, it's you can block almost everything except that Urnum Jin because it's four or five, and that makes it so powerful. But hey, I'm still in the game. But that Sylvan, oh man, that really worries me. Because that's such a powerful card. He can start selecting. And there seems to be some glitches here, but... Well, the game continues. And this must be a Brain Geyser. Exactly. I mean, I know I know Yoop's deck, and as soon as he does that, it's Brain Geyser time. There was a time, actually, when he didn't play Brain Geyser in this build. Because of the two blue. But then he decided to add Tundras to it. I believe one Tundra only, and that proved to be enough to kind of balance it the right way. So he would have to, he has that double blue that's needed for Brain Geyser. And there's an attack. And what I'm doing now is I'm blocking on the Urnum with the Mishra's Factory and a White Knight. And he's also sourced that other White Knight. And at least I now finally. Um, 
you know, got rid of all the uh, the Urnums. And look at this, I'm actually playing a Sarah Angel. So that's pretty good. If he cannot remove this one, at least I've got some damage through the air. We're both on 13. Of course he has that Sylvan going and now he has the Library of Alexandria. Drawing extra cards because remember, he also had that Brain Geyser. So I mean, he's in a huge, he has a huge advantage, but considering everything, I don't think I'm, I'm, I'm doing, I think I'm doing pretty good. That's what I want to say here. Um, he's playing an Icy. Oh my, this is going to be very difficult for me. I mean, at least he doesn't really have creatures that I'm afraid of yet. There it is. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. There's the Urn Gen, the 4 5 powerhouse. I'm playing a plateau. Still got some cards in hand, it looks. And um, I want to attack here, so I want to go in combat. He taps my angel in response. That makes sense. And at least I'm going to play out something. Playing a Stone Rain over the Library of Alexandria. So that's pretty good. Unfortunately for me, I mean, he already played that huge Brain Geyser. So the card advantage is there. He also has the Sylvan. So there are just so many pieces of the puzzle that are working that, okay, of course you want to take care. Oh no, stop this. <clears throat> okay, so the regrowth on the Library of Alexandria and he's playing it out. I mean, kind of because of that Sylvan and here you see the strength of the Sylvan Library, he can kind of pick the cards he needs and that's why it looks like he's extremely lucky. But actually he's not, he's just, he has that Sylvan and he has the Brain Geyser earlier to get so many cards. So he basically has all the answers. Card advantage basically means that you have answers to problems and of course you can come up with new problems for your opponent. So he has the IC to, to block my Sarah. He has, you know, I re keep removing his creatures but he finds new ones. Um, I remove his land, he gets, he, he regrows it. So it's endless. At least I'm, I'm putting some more pressure here playing my second Sarah Angel. Uh, playing with two Sarahs actually in this uh, deck. So it's pretty creature heavy, the deck I'm playing. And the nice thing is with red, you also include the direct damage, so that's also a way to win the game. Whereas my opponent ha just has to win uh, using using um, creature power, dealing creature damage, I should say. So he's attacking now, and I'm doing that double block again that I've done earlier, so I'm animating my factory. And actually, this is interesting. I choose to block on all three, so I'm, I'm afraid that he's gonna play exactly, that he's gonna take care of my artifact creature and then take care of also of my um, of my white knight, losing both creatures and not the djinn. So at least this way, I mean, I've lost the Sarah Angel, but he also lost his Urnum djinn. So that's a good thing. Let's see what I can do here. He's tapping my angel. And I mean, when I'm looking at this game, I kind of feel like I'm really, really putting on a fight, but it, it, it just looks endless. I mean, what my opponent is doing here. I'm on nine, I'm tapped out. And I'm playing a chain lightning here over his factory. So that was an interesting attack step by me. I guess my goal was just to take care of that factory. Interesting choice. Not sure if that was a good choice, to be honest. It's his turn now. I'm gonna look at my board state. Is that two Arnim Jins? Entering the game? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Well, that's pretty much done for. I need a Wrath of God. That's what I need. Another card that I need to put in the sideboard. That's what I like about these games. You really get to, um, you really get to know your deck and 
you really get to rethink your strategy and think, okay, so this could happen as well. So I kind of need more than just four swords to plows here. Look at that, an ancestral recall. I mean, you're already killing me, man. You don't need to also include an ancestral recall. And how, how is he going to kill me? Oh, he's taking an extra turn with the time walk. <laughs> okay, man. Oh, you've, you've got the game. You've got the game. Well done. So uh, here we saw an Urnum on ice in full swing. So, I mean, I know we've seen a lot of this deck on the channel. Um, it's a very strong deck, and I love to, um, to see it in action. It wins a lot of times. It's really a tier one deck. Uh, well, thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we um, talk old school magic. And um, if you'd like to see more games, you can click on the links that are appearing right now on the screen. And if you're not a member yet of the channel, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. I'm hoping to reach a thousand as fast as I can to generate some income. Um, also, please like, uh, leave a comment, tell me what you think of the games. If you have some advice from my Pink Sylvan uh, build, please let me know because, you know, maybe I can tweak it so that it uh, it can actually win against the Urnum on Ice deck. Uh, for now, thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic, and see you next time. <laughs>